Hey, Imprint Church, it's Darren Larson here, one of the pastors of our church. I'm grateful to come at you here on a Tuesday morning to bring you a devotional today for you to think about something that God has for you. Last Christmas, we have a gal in our church who has an Etsy shop. She's super creative and she makes art. And one of the things she made was this right here, an artwork piece that says, let the morning bring word of your unfailing love for I have put my trust in you. And I looked at this last year on her shop and said, I gotta get that for my wife. And so I did for a Christmas gift and then Kelly hung it in our room next to her bed, next to her side of the bed. And every morning when I look up in the morning, I see this there as a good reminder. I don't know if you know this, but this comes from Psalm 143, which is something I wanna read to us today. It says this, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me, my heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old, I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you, my soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Selah. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. And in your steadfast love, you will cut off my enemies and you will destroy all the adversaries of my soul. For I am your servant. Man, what a great psalm. This is one of the so-called penitential psalms in the psalms. There are seven of them in there that you'll find. And they're called this because there's a prominent theme of self-confessed guilt. And you probably saw this as we heard it read. David calls out to God, the writer of this psalm, calls out to God for mercy and asks the Lord to hear his prayer and answer his prayer. But he realizes that he cannot call out on the basis of his own perfect obedience before God. In fact, he acknowledges that no one, himself included, is truly righteous before God there in Psalm 143 verses 1 and 2. In fact, this psalm makes it really clear that we are incapable of saving ourselves. We cannot perform enough righteous deeds for God to listen to us. And it is merely upon his grace that he does those things. In fact, it really reminds me of the book of Romans, where Paul talks about how there is no one righteous, no, not one, which is actually a, song, a quote from Psalm 14, but the language is almost identical to Psalm 143 as well. But then David does something really cool. Even this penitential psalm, he appeals to God on the basis of his faithfulness and character. And he says, God, I know I'm not worthy. I know I've done all these terrible things, but you're faithful, you're worthy. You're the one who I can turn to and I'm trusting in your character. And he asks God for intervention from Psalm 143 verses five through six, and even specifically asks for things in verses seven through 12. What a good reminder for us today. I imagine you don't feel worthy before the Lord. I imagine you feel like that you can't call on to him, call on him because of the things that you have done. But if we appeal to God on the basis of his faithfulness and character, then we remember something cool. And that is he will answer according to what he wants to do. And there are so many cool things we can learn from this psalm. Um, as I think about this, I, I just point out a couple things for us today. Don't forget when you're reading the psalms to look for the character of God. I mean, we see it all throughout this psalm. Um, the basis of David's prayer was based on God's characteristics. And then we see the characteristics that are mentioned there. I wrote down here, God's faithfulness is mentioned in verse one. His righteousness is mentioned also in verse one. That God is a good worker in verse five. That God is a person who offers all people steadfast love in verse eight. That God is our deliverer and a refuge in verse nine, and that God is good in verse 10. Man, during times of complete chaos and crisis, friends, will you remember the character of God? In fact, my wife said to me this morning as I ripped this thing off the wall to bring it here to the church to do this devotion, she said, don't forget to remind people that they should think about memorizing this psalm. For when they're in a time of chaos, that they can quote this. 
when the wheels fall off life, you can remind yourself of God's character and goodness and you can call out to him when times are horrible. Likewise, we can remember when things are bad, we can trust in the past faithfulness of God. I mean, that's what David did here in verse 5. He says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the works of your hands. Will you rehearse places in your life where God has been faithful to you? Man, right now in the time of coronavirus, will you rehearse God's faithfulness to you? And the past, uh, the things that he's done for you and how he has been with you and how he showed himself real to you, will you allow those times to lead you into the future? And then we should also just remember to pray like the psalmist does. And as you're reading through the psalm, not just Psalm 143, but all the psalms, will you remember that we can learn to pray by praying the psalms? This prayer seems to increase boldness as you read through it. I mean, David in verse 1 says, Hear my prayer. And then in verse 7, he says, Answer me quickly, Lord. And then in verse 9, he says, Deliver me from my enemies. And finally, in verse 10, he says, Teach me to do your will. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. It just seems to increase as David prays to God and as he gets closer and remember his faithfulness to him. Psalm 143 is no recipe for making God answer the prayers that we have, but it is a pattern for us to remember how to pray. Friends, we wanted to make prayer more normal for Imprint Church this year. And our hope is, is that this will become part of life in quarantine that you will learn to pray, that you will pray with boldness, that you will remember the character of God, and that every morning as you will wake up, you will remember God's unfailing love towards you, towards your family, no matter what is going through your life right now. Let me pray for us about these things. God, thank you for your unending faithfulness to us, even though we don't deserve it. Lord, that you are our deliverer, you are the one that offers us steadfast love, and that you are the one that acts according to your character and not according to how righteous we are or whether we've done all the right things. And so, Lord, we're thankful for that. And so, Lord, we come to you with boldness today as we're reminded in Scripture to approach the throne of grace with boldness so we might find help in our time of need. And, Lord, we come before you today and wanting to make prayer more normal, we ask you to do an amazing thing in our lives and in our world, Lord. Lord, I know many of us have prayers, and for right now, for just a second, I'm going to give you just 10 seconds of silence. I want you to make a bold prayer to the Lord and ask him to do something in your life. So, Lord, deliver us. Lord, answer our prayers. Hear us now. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' good name, amen. Friends, if you need anything, don't forget to reach out to us at Imprint Church and uh, find us here. I know there's lots of needs going on during this time. If your mental health is not doing well, please reach out to someone here. We'd love to talk with you, to pray with you. Don't forget to jump into our Zoom prayer meetings that are coming up. We'd love to connect with you on that, even if it's for you just to jump in and say hi. Come see us in some way virtually right now. We would love to be here for you. All right, we'll see you soon.